Hi, this is Melissa Osborne from Infectious Diseases at Metro Health. Today we're going to talk a little bit about diarrhea, uh, how to tell the difference between acute and chronic, and uh, whether or not the diarrhea is infectious. So the first thing to do is to find out from the patient whether they're really having diarrhea. Uh, most people think uh, that loose stools are diarrhea, but loose stools do not equal diarrhea. Um, for it to be diarrhea, they should be having at least six bowel movements a day, uh, in addition to the diarrhea or to the stools being loose. Um, I also ask them how long have the symptoms been going on. Uh, if it's um, more than a month, that puts them into chronic diarrhea, and that makes me less concerned that they have an infectious process going on, and more worried about something like in inflammatory bowel disease or irritable bowel disease, uh, malabsorption, or another GI problem, and less worried about an infection. If it's less than one month, um, then that could possibly be an infection, and I want to ask them more questions to find out exactly what could be going on. So uh, probably the most important part of sorting out what could be the cause of the diarrhea is taking a really good history from the patient. Uh, like most infectious diseases, we're really into the little epidemiologic clues that could tell us um, about what the cause might be. Uh, so we start out with asking them again about the times per day, and that gives us a sense not only, not so much about the etiology, uh, but more about the severity of the diarrhea. Uh, so it could be anywhere from five times per day all the way up to 20 times per day. Uh, when we get up into the 20 times per day region, uh, then we start to think about things like C. diff, which... Uh, patients say they just can't get off the toilet and they just keep going and going and going. Uh, bloody diarrhea makes us also think of certain things. Um, bloody diarrhea usually um, should make you think of some kind of bacteria that would invade the wall of the uh, colon or the mucosa. And there are certain pathogens that are more likely to do that. Um, travel history is also very important. Uh, if the patient's been traveling, they're going to be exposed to a lot of other pathogens that they might not get here in the United States. Now, we're not talking about traveling to Detroit or Chicago. Uh, this is more overseas travel, uh, particularly to countries that have poor sanitation um, in Africa, Central America, um, Asia. Uh, there's different kinds of pathogens they could be exposed to. Uh, we're not going to talk about all the different pathogens that they could get uh, traveling overseas because that would be too many. Uh, so the patient that we're going to focus on today is someone who might come into the clinic in the U.S. Um, presenting with acute infectious diarrhea. Um, pets at home can also be a source of um, diarrhea. Uh, and not only just cats and dogs, um, but you also want to ask about reptiles, uh, snakes, turtles, uh, can carry salmonella, lizards, um, fish. Uh, and then in ID, we always get really specific. So you want to know, is the dog a puppy? Is the cat a kitten? Uh, because different, um, there's differences whether the cat is a kitten and the dog is a puppy. You also want to ask about their occupation. Daycare workers uh, are prone to getting diarrhea. A lot of um, pathogens that cause diarrhea can cause outbreaks in daycares, um, in particular Giardia uh, and some Campylobacters. Uh, a corollary to this is if the patient themselves has any small children at home, uh, people, um, if the children are still in diapers especially. Uh, and the next thing to ask about is any unusual food exposures. The patient is always going to want to blame their diarrhea on something that they ate, um, but that's hardly ever the case. Um, most cases of diarrhea are not food poisoning, um, but you still want to ask about it. Uh, if you see a cluster of cases or if you've heard about um, an outbreak or if you see several patients um, that all ate at the same restaurant or several people in the same family who ate the same thing that are sick, uh, then you might have a heightened suspicion for, um, for food poisoning. So you should ask about it, but it's hardly ever um, related to what they ate. 
And then finally, take a sexual history. Uh, men who have sex with men are at risk for certain um, pathogens that could be transmitted through rectal or anal sex, um, Shigella, Salmonella, um, and Giardia in particular.